What inspires me the most about this work is learning about the history of the object as I'm working on it. These things have incredible provenance, who owned them, how they survived, the vicissitudes of time, and then they end up in our hands to be preserved. It's always a discovery working in this field. When visitors come to the diplomatic reception rooms, what they see is a world-class collection of early American craftsmanship. When the rooms close for their annual restoration period, craftsmen from all over the nation carefully clean, preserve, mend, repair items just in time for the rooms to open up in September. I'd like to think that we're carrying on traditions that started by our forefathers. What happens with custom window treatments is you always start out with design. So forget these fabulous fabrics for a moment. If you don't have a perfect design sketched out, you're going nowhere. We set a standard, I like to call it the American standard in this sense, that was taken from generations of still hand sewing portions of our drapery that almost no other business does. Even though these are new, these could have easily been made at the time of George Washington. Not just me, but I think even people that work with me and I work for, they know there's pride being taken. You know, it's not just a job. Whatever we put in here, not just has to look good, but also has to function in a better way than it did before. With American furniture, everything is very well restrained. I like the balance and the feel of it, and I fell in love with it. I saw conservation as sort of my selfish way of continuing to work with this furniture because I wasn't sure that I'd be able to make a living just doing reproductions of it. In conservation, you know, we are trying to stabilize and protect a piece of furniture. For me, I find it's a balancing act between the needs of the object and the needs of the owner. It's trying to preserve the history of a piece. So you're not trying to take away anything that you think is important, understanding how that piece was made or how that piece was used, any part of that piece's history. It's patience. Each material has different limits, and that's what you kind of learn as a craftsman. You start to begin to really understand how far you can push something and, and when you need to say stop. But just cleaning the uh, edges of this with the swabs to get the glue off. It's important for these objects to be preserved for future generations because it gives us the chance to study them, to understand what the technology at play was at the time that these were built, to understand what their aesthetics were, what they found beautiful. That's, I think, a big part of it. I was really drawn to photographing things from museums because I love art. It just gives you a perspective on life when you look back and see things from the past. We tend to think of things like art as these permanent objects that are in museums and they'll always be here and we'll always have them, but things sometimes change. There are fires, there are sales of things, objects travel to other places and don't come back. So when you photograph things and you publish them, it's a way to preserve. One of the amazing things about photographing at the diplomatic reception rooms is that they have such a range of material, furniture, documents, paintings, china, silver, but these images are all being used by educators all over the world through the web. Access to the images is a wonderful thing for the collection to get out into the world. Each of these objects tells a story, and they're done in an atmosphere which is extraordinarily convivial, and things are displayed just absolutely beautifully here, and we have to keep it that way. This is what we're here for, is to make these beautiful museum spaces that are here, not for a year, but for 40, 50, 100. That's one of the main reasons I enjoy and got into this. I am a faux finisher. We can virtually turn any surface into something that it is not. We can take a piece of wood and make it look like granite, quartz, marble, and it's all through paint. This piece, if you would have seen it before, you know, how we glazed the shell and actually showed all this detail. Prior to this, you didn't really see all that. Now, when you turn the lights on, this is a jewel box now. I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful thing. And again, in the future, I can say, wow, that's gonna be around for a long time.
without the craftsmen maintaining these objects, restoring, preserving these objects, we would not have the rooms as we have them today. In these rooms, treaties are signed, perhaps wars are ended, perhaps peace can be achieved somewhere. These rooms celebrate the workmanship of early Americans. I think that they show the best of America. The story is the founding of America, our development as a nation, where we were, how we got to where we are, where we plan to go even. It's about America's place in the world. All civilization is judged by the art that's left behind. These are the touchstones of our civilization. So art is the glue. The great political power of art is the glue that holds nations together.